A new political party in Arizona aims to give voters more moderate options. So what could that mean for elections here? Here to talk about that is Republican consultant Marcus Del Artino and Democratic consultant DJ Quinlan. Thanks for both uh, for joining us. Let's start with you. Before we get to the new political party, I do want to get some of your reactions to the Jake Hoffman interview. He has emerged as one of the leaders of the, conservative, the conservatives down at the Capitol, uh, you know, the Freedom Caucus. Uh, want to get your thoughts on that. I know you've got some strong thoughts on his proposal to chop up Maricopa County into four pieces. Um, as a longtime Republican, you were concerned about some property tax increases. <laughs> no, I was not. <laughs> um, you know, Dennis, the, the vast majority of business organizations in Arizona oppose that measure, but it's largely because it's going to result in one of the largest tax increases. Um, and you know taxes, um, I'm a tax geek. I love that. That's my, my favorite. But um, you know, property taxes are probably one of the most offensive taxes for Republicans. And so that, I think there's a little sensitivity uh, involved in that proposal. Yeah. And how much of a uh, problem is, and is him and his committee that he has, how much of a problem is that posed uh, for Governor Katie Hobbs and how does she get around this? Well, I mean, Hoffman's definitely an obstructionist. I mean, he makes that very clear in everything he says uh, related to Katie Hobbs and mm -hmm. related to, you know, the process of confirmation. Um, but he's really like the driver of the clown car for mm -hmm. the Republicans in the legislature. So the fact that he's getting this platform, you know, is really a good thing for Democrats because it's really elevating this, uh, you know, caucus that isn't solving any problems mm -hmm. for regular Arizonans. Yeah, and, and, and Marcus, I want to ask you too, how does like some of the platform of, the, of the, the Freedom Caucus, how does that help Republicans win votes in future elections? Because a big part of their economic plan uh, was that food tax, was that rental tax. Those were things that Carrie Lake ran on and, you know, Carrie Lake lost this election. I, here's what I would say. We are setting up a, 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 a theme, if you will, of differences in between a Democratic governor and a Republican-controlled legislature. And as you look at some of these proposals moving forward, I mean, I contend that Arizona is a center-right state. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what we're going to do is sort of set up a, a clear uh, uh, differences in between the Democrat Party in Arizona and the Republican Party. Um, and I think that those differences are set to benefit Republicans certainly running for the legislature and other statewide office. Yeah, and, and again, to the same point, I mean, how do Democrats see this when they see, you know, conservatives continue to run these election bills? A lot of this stuff was inspired or adjacent to these conspiracy theories that we've seen in Arizona for the past several years. How does that play out in this next election? Because, you know, it is a very narrow majority uh, for Republicans there, one seat in both chambers those flip, you know, either way, I mean, we're talking about Democrat majorities in both chambers. Yeah, well, I'm not one to give advice to Republican candidates often, but, you know, I think that it doesn't behoove you to keep focusing on the previous election. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's, it's really bad for them. And, and I would say I think that they, they're focusing on taxes. They're certainly focusing on education. They're focusing on uh, a whole variety, wide variety of issues. And I think when a budget finally emerges, probably on June 29th, you will see those stark differences between the Republican proposals at the legislature and the Democratic. Again, it's, it is worth reminding uh, our viewers here that a lot of those proposals were put out there by the, uh, the gubernatorial nominee in 22, Carrie Lake. And again, Carrie Lake did lose that election. She did lose that election, but there were certainly a number of legislators who brought those ideas to Carrie Lake's campaign. So it wasn't, I don't think all of those proposals were uh, fostered by Carrie Lake. I think certainly a, a large number of them were fostered by some of these Republican legislators who want to show a, a, a contrast. You know, mm -hmm. we saw it this week with CRT. Um, and there is a contrast there. Yeah, yeah d definitely. There's a lot of different priorities between uh, the governor and this Republican legislature. But since we're talking about elections, let's move on. Let's talk about the new party in Arizona, the no labels party. And, for, and again, as we mentioned, you know, coming into this segment, uh, it, the aim is to you know, nominate more moderate candidates. Uh, how does this affect the Democrat Party? Because the early reporting we're seeing is that Democrat Party leaders, at least on the national level, are very worried about this, that this could end up hurting Democrat uh, candidates in the party here in 2024. Your thoughts? 
Yeah, sure. I mean, I think anytime you see a, a change in the current like political makeup of the state, people are going to react. But what we've seen historically when these like third parties come around, mm -hmm. there just isn't a really strong desire. Mm -hmm. And I think you look at the couple of independent candidates that were on the ballot and third party candidates on the ballot in 2022, it wasn't a game changer. I don't really expect this will be either. Yeah, and I know I understand there is a lot of dissatisfaction amongst the voters with both political parties at this time. But to, you know, DJ's point, you know, uh, you know, maybe, you know, this is not the right answer. I mean, who who is this going to appeal to? This is really going to appeal to moderates. And still, by the way, in context, we still have a lot of questions about how this group is going to be <laughs> I operating. I have a lot of questions. Uh, you know, this isn't just a fly-by-night operation that just popped up, right? Okay, they have $70 million. You don't just, you know, ask somebody for a check for $70 million. Something more is going on here. They're playing in Arizona. They're playing in Colorado. If you look at some of the states they're playing in, it maps, uh, maps out sort of nicely to a presidential campaign. I think that as the weeks go on and more questions are answered, uh, we're going to find that there's more to do with this organization than we initially thought. My other question has to do with um, Kirsten Sinema. And the question is, is it easier for her to qualify under this party as the amount of signatures mm -hmm. uh, to get on the ballot uh, rather than as an, ind an independent in Arizona? Because the bar is pretty high uh, as an independent. Do I think she can do it? Sure. Uh, but is it a lot easier to fall under this party? It very well may be. All right, and we got about a minute left here. I do want to get to this. Governor issued her, I believe it was her 16th veto of the session already, um, and this had to deal with the bill that would have banned so-called critical race theory. It is not being taught in, the, in, in Arizona schools right now. In fact, the bill's sponsor, J.D. Mesnard, even admitted that he is not aware of any CRT being taught in uh, any schools in his district out in the East Valley. Just give us your thoughts. I mean, this was no surprise to anybody that the governor's going to do this. Yeah, I think the governor spent about one second deciding what to do with this because it just doesn't affect people's everyday lives. It's not, it's not being taught in Arizona. It's not solving any challenges for Arizona voters. So this was an easy one. Yeah, and why are Republicans wasting their time trying to pass this stuff and send it to the I governor? Would, She's I, been very clear about she, she has, ain't signing this kind of stuff. She has been clear, but one, it sets up the contrast, of which we just talked about. But two, you know, it, we're... This is happening in other states, and there is a pattern of things happening in other states that come to Arizona, and I think that we have to be realistic that there are forces pushing this in Arizona, mm -hmm. and I think the Republicans want to say, we don't want this this type of educational system in our schools. Well, and I think there is some confusion about that. I know CRT is a, almost a graduate-level course in colleges, and, uh, you know, it's not exactly being taught here in Arizona, just because you don't like the history that's being taught doesn't mean it's CRT. But uh, anyway, we're going to have to end it right there. Uh, that is all the time we have today, but be sure to join us next week for more politics.